Tied up at 28, Emmitsburg and Eagle Grove with this Class 2A District 2 matchup. What's on the line? A playoff spot is on the line. Let's take a look at the fourth down play as Eagle Grove had it fourth and goal from the one-foot line of Emmitsburg, and the goal line D stands up for the Ehawks. Man, what a beautiful job there. Number 13, Tyler Klegel, just uh, all over that play. Beautiful job. Now the captains are meeting out of the field. Kirk, let's go over the overtime rules here in high school football. For those who are watching for the first time, it's different from college. It is. Uh, both teams will get a possession here from the 10-yard line. They have four, four downs, but... Uh, you know, they'll flip the coin here, and, of course, every team wants to go on defense first. I mean, you go on defense, then you know when you get the ball for your four plays exactly what you have to do. If they score a touchdown, you know you have to score a touchdown. But I tell you, I hated these things, B.J. I mean, I <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I just, uh, you know, it's just too nerve-wracking down here. I mean, one fumble, and, and you're probably going to lose the game. I mean, one kind of a turnover. But I tell you, you know, the thing of it is, uh, players right now for both teams got to reach down and get a little something extra. As we pointed out, there's a bunch of players out there that have played a bunch of football. So uh, they've got to reach down now and then get a little something extra right here. Eagle Grove will have it first and ten, and they'll try to go to the north as Emmitsburg won the toss and will defend first. So they'll get the second crack at it. A couple of scores to throw your way out of the Central Iowa Metro League. These are all finals. Southeast Polk defeats Johnston 21-18. Lincoln over Ottumwa 20-14. Valley all over Marshalltown. That game late 31-6. And Waukee uh, up late against Ames 26-8. Your scores there. So here we go. We're going into the first overtime, tied up at 28 with Eagle Grove, who will have the football first. There's a look at Coach Meth and his Eagles huddling up there on the sideline. Boy, I tell you, what you're telling your players right now is, hey, you want this to be the best four plays right here that you've had in this whole ball game. Make these the best four plays. Then we'll take it from there. And so much is at stake. You know, some of the things that, that, that Coach Meth told us in the conference call and when we talked to him before the game, B.J., uh, you know, he told us, you know, I've got some plays here that we haven't run all season just for this ball game. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't seen them, I don't think. No. And, uh, so you never can tell. This might be the place for a big whoop de doo sort of thing. But is now the time to do it, though? Well, you wouldn't think so. <laughs> but uh, it depends on how big of a whoop de doo it is. But... Uh, I tell you, you can use a play that a team hasn't seen before. They haven't seen it on film. I mean, they haven't scouted you with it. So uh, you spring a play like that right now, it, it, it could be uh, deadly. All right, the first overtime just about ready to get underway. Hope you're enjoying it here on Mediacom Connections. It's live high school football with the come and go high school football game of the week. So the Eagles have the football first. It'll be Pluger underneath center. They'll go at the top, sweep the cherry. He'll try to turn the corner. He's on his feet and into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagle Grove. Wow. I tell you, that's what a spread formation there. We hadn't seen that a whole lot tonight. But then the toss into that spread. And I tell you, there were some people down there blocking that did a beautiful job. We are way as far away from them as we can get here. So when we see this, uh, we'll be able to pick them out. That was a beautiful carry there. Uh, he just kept going and finally dove into the end zone. Now for the ever so important extra point, John Morse will do the kicking. And it's good. 35-28 Eagle Grove with the seven point lead. And here's another look at the score. Now this is going away from us here, but you'll still see a nice, nice cut there. Beautiful cut. And then in the last there, he's diving into the end zone. Great block out there by Troy Stockdale uh, right out in front of him. Occupied the corner just long enough for him to get it in the end zone. Voss with a good opening here. Wow, beautiful job there. Well, that's what it takes. I mean, that, that young man probably did have his best play uh, of the night. So now the E-Hawks have to answer, you know. Uh, 
You got 10 yards. You got to make one first down. That's what you want your team to believe. We just got to get one first down here, guys. These players out on the field and many before them, too, have grown up in the town of Emmitsburg. They have never not played a November game. And they hand it off. They go with Morris, and he'll take it to the six. A pick up a four on the play. It'll bring up second and goal for the E-Hawks. Well, that's that play they're running a little wider than they did in the first half, B.J., and it's, uh, they're having more success with it here, but that's a darn good carry on first down there. Cherry on the tackle for Eagle Grove. Vaughn again will give it to Morris. This time the sledgehammer stocked up the or stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Wow. Well, Guess who? Voss was the first one to greet him. Got them there for uh, now. They've got uh, well, they got their five yards on their first two plays. Now you got to get five yards on the next. Boy, nice job there by the defensive tackle there for for Eagle Grove. Nice job of getting underneath the blockers. That's what those guys have got to do. Pack Stadium here tonight of Eagle fans and Ehawk fans. Third and goal for Emmitsburg. Vaughn to pass. Has time to the end zone, and this one's incomplete. Wow. Trying to hit his intended target, Wellick, in the back of the end zone, but that one was knocked away by Kist. Just waited too long there, BJ. I mean, had it open early, but uh, not after he waited that long. Then the defense had time to adjust and get over there and get on him. So, well, I guess we can say easily that this is the play of the game. Yeah. <laughs> It's either in the end zone or it's an Eagle Grove win. So here we go. The play in from the sideline. Vaughn will hand it off to Jansen. Did he get in? It's close. Did he get in? No signal. No, he did not. He stopped at the one inch line. And Eagle Grove keeps their playoff line or hopes alive. Boy, was that close, PJ. Wow. Unusual call, maybe just straight up the middle there, but let those big guys get out there and try to push them back into the end zone. So you know, BJ, I hate to say things like this. They're so cliched, but you know, it's just a shame that either team had to lose this game. I mean, you know. These, these players really did play their hearts out tonight. I mean, anybody who watched any part of this ball game could tell. I mean, they put everything they had into it. It's just a shame that one team, you know, has to be disappointed like this. If you're watching at home, you have to give a big tip of your hat to that Emmitsburg football program. And how about this Eagle Grove team making the playoffs potentially for the first time in the school's history. Just their seventh winning season since 1949. And the Eagles do it in overtime, 35 to 28. We've got more to come. You're watching the Come and Go High School Football Game of the Week here on Mediacom Connections. Five twenty-eight. your final score in overtime. Eagle Grove defeats Emmitsburg. What a finish between the two. And yes, the Eagles are celebrating. Sean Meth and his Eagle Grove Eagles have put themselves in position to go to the playoffs. Time now for our player of the game. The play of the game brought to you by Mid-American Energy. It was the touchdown in overtime. Cherry, a 10-yard run. And then, of course, the other play of the game was that stop at the one-inch line. Kirk, that was very, very close. Boy, I tell you, he got right down there sniffing the goal line but didn't quite get it in. The people who have the best view of that are the linesmen, and he came in, made a quick signal to tell us he was short. The votes are being tabulated for the player of the game, and there's a lot of them. And a lot of tired players coming up tomorrow. As you see, the game ball is being passed out by Coach Meth. And our player of the game is going to be Zach Pluger. 
You see his offensive statistics, 6 of 9, 70 yards, one touchdown passing, 37 yards rushing, but he also played stellar on the defensive side of the ball as well. And here's one of those scoring, or excuse me, wicked passes that were hauled in in the second half. Well, I tell you, you know, his real value to this ball game and this, and this team, you can't see in those numbers, B.J. I mean, his real value was getting out there and actually leading this team to victory and, and keeping things together and then doing a great job of executing that offense when it really counted. There is Zach Pluger. And his Eagles have a chance now to go to the playoffs. We want to thank... Well, our producer, Lance Herbal, the director, Jeff Johnson, the rest of the crew for Kirk Daddle. This is B.J. Shaven saying so long here from Eagle Grove. The Eagles knock off the Emmitsburg Ehawks 35-28 in overtime.